This is a photograph I took a few months back now when I was on holiday in uh, Hale in Cornwall. Um, if you all follow it, this is St Ives Bay, if you follow it all the way around, St Ives is over here and then you've got the um, God Revy Lighthouse over this side. I was lucky really that the, the sky was absolutely perfect, dark clouds, bright sun behind the clouds, so quite a dramatic effect really. So before I start, just a quick whiz through the materials. These are my paints, we've got ultramarine, lemon yellow, Payne's grey, glycerin crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. The, uh, the large run rants and hake in the water. Um, the only other brush I often normally use is a little, little rig of brush. Um, 15 by 11 Fabriano, 130 pound watercolour paper. And I always keep a tea towel under just to take the excess off the uh, brush because it holds so much water. So one last quick look at the uh, photograph and then I'll start cracking. So I'm going to start off with the hike. So you just clean water, just lubricating the paper all over. So if, this is, if this is your first time, please subscribe. I'm trying to do a, I'm going to try and do a painting every day, a new video every weekday, Monday through to Friday. We'll see how it goes really. Um, so if you subscribe you won't miss a thing. This is raw sienna. Just neat raw sienna, very sticky on the palette this is. Um, sometimes it's dry, sometimes it's sticky. I think it's the humidity. I have got it next to a, some plants, I don't know if that's what's causing it. Um, very limited palette, I think I'm just going to go raw sienna, probably just burnt umber, ultramarine, and there's not going to be that lot else really, because um, it's more about tones, this, uh, this painting. So I'm just going to focus on you know, mood and, and atmosphere than anything else. So this is ultramarine with a ultramarine and burnt umber and then I'm conscious that there's a path down there so I'll try and get the lights reflecting off the path down the bottom. I don't want too much going on up in the sky. Just pushing this in from the sides. Yeah, I might even a few little clouds in. It, it is rain, I hope you can hear me over there, the noise of the rain on the roof. So first thing I'm gonna do, that's the background in. And I'm going to put this distant land, which is quite high up, right up there somewhere. Brown, bit of blue, dark mix. I'm just going to leave, it's like pools of water around this area, so I'm just going to leave bits, just showing the raw sienna, so it looks like the, the raw sienna just sort of reflecting, the light reflecting off the pools. Just dipping the, just the corner of the brush into the water. And there's the, I know I get a lot of questions about how do you get that chisel edge. It's um. Just getting the right amount of water in the brush without it being sort of over diluting the mix. There's never any water swishing about. I can always tip the palette upside down. 
and there's always just enough brush to hold the hairs together. Back to the sand dunes, that is. No water. That nice and dark against that light. Light sky. I do, I I can stretch a little, so I'm just going to pull it flat against the board. And then it's good to go again. So I'm just working out now. Right, dark area down here, into the middle ground there. I'm just going to clean the brush now because I want to go back to a lighter tone. So I might just start off with a bit of raw sienna. And this is a small grain. Grass coming down from this left hand side. Darken that up a little bit. Third one back. Right, um, third one back, also maroon. Just, just defining the edge of this walkway across this little, little bridge. Siding. And what I might do while it's still wet, it's still wet, let's just stick these posts in. So the first post is about there, nice and dark. And we've got another post out there. You know, that sort of recede then into the, uh, into the distance. Now while that's still wet, I'm going to take a piece of plastic card and imagine if you get the lights coming from there, just reflecting off the top. I'm just going to give the top a quick scrub as the light hits it. And then, maybe even, you can see, Catching the edge.
and then we've got little bits of wire so while it's because it's still wet now I can scrape these in so if you can imagine little bits of wire going from one post to the next I'm just doing one quick scrape don't mess about it just put it in once and be done with it that's there and then straight across and then another one across there like that and I'm just going to put one more one more one down the bottom across there like that and then this bit where it sort of wraps its way around it or just sort of wrapping its way around the post That's that left side done. Now let's work on this right hand side. So I think again I'm going to go back, clean the brush because I want to go back to a lighter colour. I just want to make sure this is flat as well. I want to go back to a lighter colour because just to get some sort of variation because all this is dark and you can see how it goes back to light and then darkening down here rather than just one massive dark because then you wouldn't be able to differentiate from the middle ground which is this bit and the foreground so again starting over here I've gone dark now I want to go light again just so there's a, a sort of distinct gap between light and dark so back into this raw sienna and just pushing it up into the darker area and mixing it in there like that. And you sort of twist the brush around like that while you're doing it, just, like, just to get random effects. Now I want to start getting dark again, so I'm into the ultramarine, burnt umber, and again I'm just working out, I want to leave this path alone for time, just for a minute. I'm just sort of twisting and turning the brush just to get those random effects and then just defining where the edge of this path is. So it's just coming down there, something like that. That's this side on. So again, next thing to do are these posts. So nice and dark, ultramarine and burnt on back. Nice thick dark mix. And I'm gonna start there. You're hardly gonna see this actually, but You'll see it better when you when we've scraped it out a bit. There's one post. There's another post right next to that. Right, and then the third post, further away slightly, is somewhere, somewhere out there. It'll stand out better when we've done a little bit of scrape. Scrape the highlights on. And there's another one about there. And they sort of you can use a smaller brush to do these. In fact, I'd recommend it because I'm just being lazy using the uh, hake. In fact, no, I'm going to have to do this. It's going to be stupid. So just burnt on that. I'll just switch to a three quarter flat brush there. Just get smaller and smaller, sort of dip down 
the sort of as I remember it, they pass it went down there, then across there, and you have to. There's like because it's like a, the, the sea comes in down the bottom of this, and uh, it's great if, if you if you got flip flops on, you can walk straight over it because I had to walk around there, and then over there, and then down, down the dunes there to uh, where any sun was surfing. Right back. Back to your piece of card, and again, I'm just going to scrape off. Scrape the top like that, just so it looks like the, the sun's catching it. And again, I'm just going to scrape the top of these. And then, more or so. You can imagine the sun's coming from there, so it's just catching, just catching the edge. It also adds a bit of definition to the post, helps make it look a bit more sort of three D. It's all, it's all wet. So I'm trying not to get my fingers in it too much. That's still a bit too wet to scrape in. People say, I know some people have trouble scraping this but you can see that that's well I'm just about to get away see that's it's still quite wet so it fills back in you need to wait until it's about half dry but then make sure it doesn't dry too much because obviously once the paint's dry you can't um it won't scrape at all but, but even if you do leave it too long you can just use a, a clean damp brush and re-wet the paint and you, you can scrape it off the, again that way um, so again, I'm going to go with four bits of wire, starting down there, do the top one first. And it sort of comes down there. around the post like that. And then just finally one along the bottom. And that's going off the uh, edge. So there's our um, fence with the uh, wire or no, it wouldn't be barbed wire, would it? I don't think it's barbed wire anyway. That's just stopping people from falling over the edge. Now, next thing I need to do is uh, it's like a, a wooden walkway, like just planks of wood all the way along. So the highlight's already there. So what I want to do now is. If I just put in the sort of shadowy bits, it'll help define the planks of wood and hopefully create quite a nice effect. So what I want, back to the hake, and I want a nice chisel edge now on the hake, so I want some fine lines. So third umber, ultramarine. Strong, strong mix, really dark mix, and then I want this. See, I can't get a perfect chisel edge because my brush is quite old now. And it's it's uh, it's wearing away, so I can only get I can only get it so fine. So I'm going to do. I'm going to start at the bottom. It's on a slight slope. A slight slope, so if I just put that in there, like
Let's see it narrower and narrower. I'm thinking of switching to the flat actually because this I just can't quite get. It's not a chisel edge. It's quite difficult because the brush is quite worn now. Switch to the other brush. And it should be a, a lot finer. So it's because the brush is so narrow. experimenting now really I see. Oh, I'm just going to leave it like that before I ruin it. See, nine times out of ten, if you're not sure, you always make it look worse. Although, you do learn from your mistakes, so um, I suppose really I should recommend that you experiment. Because you'll always know better the next time. So, I think I'm nearly there now. So. The only thing I'm going to do, tell a light, I want this a bit darker. See how dark that is against that light. So if I create the same sort of thing, I've dried the brush quite a lot. So this is going to be quite a strong mix now. And then start there. See how dark that looks now. And it's anywhere else. Um, I could just I'm just making it a bit dark around these lighter areas. What what that it's meant to be the uh, little pools of water that have gathered. But I've painted over most of them by mistake unfortunately, not a word. Um, let's just do this headland, this just needs to be a bit stronger. Seagull flying in the sky. And I'm going to call that one done. Uh, all it's left to do now is put my name in the corner. Let's see what it looks like with the mount on. So here's our painting with the mount on. So if we uh, compare it to the photograph, very little colour, um, more sort of tonal. 
tonal challenge, getting all those uh, contrasts right and trying to capture this light coming through and, and reflecting off the, uh, the path there in the foreground. I think it would have worked better if I'd have made this dark, not wooded too much about getting that sort of lighter tone of raw sienna in there to differentiate between the, the, uh, the different bands. Um, if this was darker, maybe it would have created a more dramatic light effect. Um, I don't know. But starting at the top, um, first thing I wanted to make sure I did was get this, these uh, dunes and um, these hills here. Sort of maximum contrast against the light of the sky. Which is why I sort of put them in and then I went back and put them in again just to make sure it was as, as dark as possible. Just to contrast against the, I mean that, that's meant to be the land on the horizon. And he's got sort of St Ives, he's just round here somewhere. You can see how it's lighter in tone to help uh, push it back into the distance. And again I did the same here. Just to get this, uh, these dunes here and grasses and whatnot. Try and silhouette them against the light. Then we got these little bits of water here in the middle ground. And I've started to just paint around them. Um, I think I've painted around them just a little bit too much because I've filled most of them in. You can see there it sort of does lighten up in this middle ground a little bit in tone. But I think I've overcompensated that by I've sort of lightened the whole of that section there. Like I was saying before, it might have been better if I'd have darkened, darkened the edges just to help see this light coming down the centre, reflecting off these uh, steps. But this path sort of leads you into the scene quite nicely and you've got these uh, wires either side out by, out and held up by these uh, fence posts. And they're uh, quite simple to paint. Just by popping the posts in as dark as you can and then just using a card just to scrape in. Obviously you'll need to do it while the background paint is still wet. Otherwise you won't be able to scrape the, uh, the wires out. And then I'll just scrape the top of the post off as well just to help it look like the light's just catching the top. And then the, uh, the path itself. You can see where the, uh, you've got little bits of shadow in between the, uh, the wood. But the problem I was having, because my hike's now getting quite worn, I couldn't quite get a chisel edge. So I can't get really thin lines, I might have to get a new brush. So I had to sort of switch, especially down here where they, they needed to get narrower and narrower. I had to switch to the flat brush. So there's my painting of um, Gwythian in uh, St Ives Bay. Um, I'll be putting that in my eBay store now. So let's just have a look at what else is in there at the moment. There's my little shop. Um, you, can, you can see the link in the uh, description if you wanted to have a, a quick look. There's 13 in there at the moment, so this will be the 14th one at the moment uh, for the time being it's in there. Um, I did four over the weekend, so if I'll, I'll quickly show you those now. This first one's Loch Erebor up in uh, the Highlands, but it's not the greatest work I've ever done. Here we've got um, Sutton Park. Uh, I painted from a, a photograph I took a few weeks ago. This one's uh, Venice, just, just trying something different really. Um, I, t I do Venice every now and again just to see how I've progressed because I, I do find I have great difficulty with buildings, mainly because I don't practice them enough. And then the final one I did over the weekend was uh, another one of Sutton Park from a photograph I took um, two or three weeks ago. So that's it again for today. As I mentioned before, new videos out Monday to Friday, so subscribe to uh, not miss out on any of the fun. Thanks as always for watching. Um, you can help me by liking, sharing, commenting down below in the descriptions. Um, keep practicing and I'll see you again soon.